Hey guys, this is Austin. It is 2017 and BlackBerry still exists, but why? At one point, BlackBerry was pretty much synonymous with the word smartphone. However, over the last few years, they made some questionable decisions. First up, we have the BlackBerry Passport. Now this was very much sort of the last hurrah of the BlackBerry 10 devices, as it was still completely manufactured by BlackBerry, it ran their software, and had a very much BlackBerry keyboard. So this guy was released back in 2014, however, it's just a little bit different than the old Blackberries back in the day. <laughs> As a size comparison, this is what the Passport looks like compared to a Galaxy S7. While it's not that much taller, it is so wide. Like this is, that's a crazy, crazy phone in the hand. I've gotta say though, it is unique. There's definitely no other phone out there with such a big display and an actual physical keyboard. So it's rocking a 4.5 inch, 1440 by 1440 display. And it might be a little bit weird to have a modern smartphone with a square screen, but in this case, it actually does kind of make sense as having that keyboard on the bottom is sort of a Blackberry trademark. In fact, actually it might be a BlackBerry trademark, like an actual BlackBerry trademark. <laughs> Something kind of cool about the Passport is that the keyboard is actually a touchpad. So for example, I can use it to scroll up and down on this, or maybe swipe left or right, depending on what it is. I mean, of course it has a touch screen, so that kind of negates a lot of the usefulness of a touchpad, but it is a sort of useful feature to have. <laughs> I like how before it even lets you get into the phone, you have to read about BlackBerry and how they're a global leader in mobile communications. Sure guys. All right, so we are up and running with the BlackBerry Passport. Even though this phone is a couple years old at this point, it actually has pretty reasonable specs. So inside it has a Snapdragon 801 processor paired with three gigabytes of RAM, and it also has a pretty monstrously sized 3450 milliamp hour battery, putting a lot of phones even from 2017 to shame. So when it comes to BB10, it's actually not that bad. So some things that I like about it is just how easy it is to multitask. Everything is very nice and smooth, it's pretty responsive, especially considering that this is a few year old phone. And when it comes to apps, there are some. So for example, if you open up the YouTube app, it's just a web app, which is the same for a fair few of these. But to be fair, stuff like the Twitter app actually works reasonably well. And you also do have some support for Android apps. This is done through the Amazon App Store. So the way it works is there's a virtual version of Android running on top of BB10. So if I jump into something like Spotify, it works pretty much as you would expect. Some apps don't really take too kindly to the square screen, and generally speaking, performance isn't great, but it does work. Now, beyond that, you can have some issues. So for example, a game like Crossy Road just completely fails to do anything for me. But considering that this is an older phone and it's running sort of a kludgy, put together, gross version of Android, the app support is not terrible. Honestly, there's a lot I really do like about this Passport. If it was running an up-to-date version of Android, I would actually definitely give this a shot. Next up, we have the BlackBerry Priv. Now this was an interesting phone for one big reason. It was the first BlackBerry to ship with Android instead of BBOS. Take a look at the box and you'll see that they promise privilege and privacy. That is uh, quite the statement to put on your phone. Crack this one open and you'll see a BlackBerry that looks a little bit different. So at first glance, it looks like a traditional smartphone. However, if you roll it up, Roll it up, it actually does have a full keyboard. While the Passport is a really wide phone, the Priv is incredibly tall. Now of course, once you slide the keyboard down, it's not that much bigger than an average phone. And to be fair, the hardware here is pretty nice. It does feel a little bit plasticky, even with the fake carbon fiber on the back, but it feels pretty reasonable in the hand, especially considering that you do have that physical keyboard. I think BlackBerry did a pretty good job of engineering it into the Priv. So the mechanism feels pretty solid. If you open it up, you can feel just a little bit of flex in the chassis, but it's not too bad. But of course, you're getting a very thin smartphone, not even considering that there is a full keyboard inside. The physical keyboard is decent. I don't think it really quite matches up to some of the earlier Blackberries like the Bold. I think it just is a little bit mushier than I'd like. But again, I've been on software keyboards for years. So if it's something that's a really big deal to you, I think the Priv might make some sense, but Honestly, I would probably use it with the keyboard down all the time. Something that really jumps out to me is the display. Not only is it 1440p, but it's also OLED, and it really shows. The colors are nice, the blacks are dark. Honestly, I really do like the hardware of this phone. The Priv was the first BlackBerry Android phone, but it is most certainly not the last. That's where the DTEK50 comes in. So this, while it has the BlackBerry name on it, is very much not a true BlackBerry. While this was launched less than a year ago, what you're really getting here is a little more than a rebadged Alcatel Idol 4. So not only does it not have a way of getting it out of the box, so gone are most of the traditional sort of BlackBerry things like BlackBerry OS as this guy runs Android, as well as a physical keyboard. It very much is exactly what it looks like. 
a fairly generic $300 smartphone. So here we're getting fairly close to stock Android. So there are of course some BlackBerry apps, including BBM, which of course is already available on Android and iOS anyway right now, as well as DTEK. So this is all about security. So in theory, this is going to allow you to amplify the security of a traditional Android device. And it kind of works. So you can see here that it'll give me some sort of warnings as far as I need to set like a screen lock or turn on data encryption. Um, it also reminds me that I am using a BlackBerry device and therefore device hardware is A-OK, -okay, I guess. But generally speaking, this is not really anything that special compared to other devices, specifically Samsung, which also has a very similar style of software. So while these phones aren't running Android 7 just yet, they are at least fully up to date. So if you check the Android security patch, it's from March 5th, which is just a couple weeks ago from when I'm recording this video. And that's nice to see, especially since the Priv is coming up on two years old. Now, of course, it would be nice to have a newer version of Android to go along with it, but at the very least, they are keeping these up to date. And since it's a fairly stock version of Android, hopefully those updates will continue for a little while. So while I don't really recommend these phones, there's nothing necessarily wrong with BlackBerry. Sure, they're nowhere near as big as they used to be, but these days they're making decent Android phones with solid hardware and some legitimately cool features such as a physical keyboard. It might not be for everyone, but I do believe that there's a place for BlackBerry in 2017. So would you guys buy a BlackBerry? Let me know in the comments below and I will catch you on the next one.